So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Ooh, I like your pot tonight. All in favor? Thank you, Thanks. folks. Thank you. We're now in open session. Um, at this time, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> So at this point, we will have our public hearing and comments from the community. Right, well, it's after the presentation, yeah. But it's uh, all part of the public hearing. First, we have a, the presentation by Linda, for the, who must be <laughs> able to do this in her sleep, since she did it mm -hmm. twice this morning. <laughs> and <laughs> Kids were great. Good evening. So this is the um, budget that was adopted by the board on April 14th. It's the proposed budget that'll be on the May 17th ballot. Um, in addition to the district's mission statement, we also consider the board the board's budget goals when developing the budget. Um, they are listed here. There's two budget goals this year. Um, one was to create a budget to maintain as many programs as possible given the budget cap. Any spending reductions should be distributed with equity. And the second goal was to focus more closely on actual spending instead of projected rollover numbers. Um, our budget does reflect these two goals. Um, we did um, change the way we budget to uh, actually align with what we actually spend and what, with what we actually receive. So on the May 17th ballot, there are three propositions. The first proposition is the general operating budget of $90,437,654. The second proposition is for the purchase of school buses for a total of $1,005,219. And the third proposition is for the establishment and funding of a capital projects reserve of $2 million. We do have more detail on these um, three propositions in later slides. Just for clarity, the um, the proposition three is to establish the reserve, but yes. doesn't does it require uh, voter authorization to to fund it? Yes, it does. Oh, I thought only required it to to um, use it. It requires um, for a capital reserve, the voters must approve the establishment of it, funding of it, and the oh, expenditures okay. from it. Mm -hmm. So the first um, proposition, the general operating budget, like I said earlier, is $90,437,654. The, 
This is a budget to budget increase of 2.15%, which means the um, budget itself is 2.15% higher than last year's budget or the 15-16 budget. Um, the tax levy increase, however, is only 0.22%. That's less than a quarter percent. And it is the lowest tax levy increase in at least 40 years. So we are tax cap compliant because our proposed tax levy is the allowable tax levy of $57,948,712. Um, listed here are the three components of the budget. The budget is broken down between program, administrative, and capital. The program budget is 76.74% of the total. The administrative budget is 9.37% and the capital budget is 13.89% of the total. The second proposition is for the purchase of nine 66 passenger buses for a total of $1,005,219. These purchases are aidable. Um, our transportation aid ratio is currently 54.9%. So based on that, we would receive um, about a half a million dollars back in state aid. So the net cost after state aid would be the $453,354. This slide shows information on the capital reserve establishment and funding of $2 million. The term would be for 10 years. We would use the funds for um, projects identified in the building condition survey. Um, the funding source is from current year fund balance. It's not part of the 2016-17 tax levy or the budget. Um, the voters would have to approve spending the money when it's time for that, but at that time we would be able to receive um, building aid on the expenditures um, and would be aidable at the current um, <coughs> building aid ratio at that time. And we're at almost 60% now for that. Right, so. Conceivably, our aid could be lower in 10 years from now, but we it would could still be. be able to lock in that the rate now. We would get the, when we spent the money, we right. would get it. Um, there are two property tax items that are important. The first is the property tax relief credit. This is new. It's tied to um, STAR. So any taxpayer that receives the STAR exemption and also earns less than $275,000 a year will receive $130 from New York State. And that's because the school district is tax cap compliant. Um, the tax levy increase that we have is so low, it would probably be about $10 or less for a home valued at $150,000. So the rebate that people would receive if they qualify for it is more than the increase in their taxes. We also have the alternative veterans tax exemption. This is our second year. Um, this is available on a veteran's primary residence. A veteran that served during a time of war is eligible for a 15% reduction in assessed value. Um, that same veteran could receive an additional 10% if they served in a combat zone. And veterans that are disabled are um, eligible for even more um, tax, tax exemptions too. Um, to sign up for the veterans exemptions, um, the um, taxpayers should visit their tax assessor's office in their local town. Um, but it, this only has to be done one time. So anybody that received this exemption in the 2015-16 school year doesn't need to do it again. So if the budget isn't approved on May 17th, the district will have two choices. We can either resubmit the same budget for another vote on June 21st, or we could go to a contingency budget. A contingency budget must have a 0% tax levy increase, and this year we would have to remove about an additional $2.2 million in reductions. Listed here are the restrictions when we're in contingent budget. Under contingency, there is no tax levy increase allowed, and all non-contingent expenditure items must be removed from the budget. Everything that's listed here on the left side of the screen would be required to um, be removed from a contingency budget. So we would have to charge for all community use of school buildings. Um, we wouldn't be able to purchase certain student supplies or new equipment. 
um, non-essential maintenance would be removed from a contingent budget, as well as um, capital expenditures unless there was an emergency. And we wouldn't be allowed to give salary increases to non-unionized, non-instructional staff. Everything on the right side of the screen could be considered for reduction if we needed to meet that $2.2 million. And those, th um, th those are non-mandated items. So that's athletics, advanced placement and elective classes at the high school, co-curriculars, field trips, kindergarten, sixth and seventh grade um, languages other than English, and the elementary librarians and elementary instrumental. So listed here are some important dates. The last date to register to vote is Thursday. That can be done here at district office from 4 to 8 p.m. And the actual vote is Tuesday, May 17th at Haviland Middle School from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Oh. Be could happy you, to answer any questions. Could you just questions. highlight again the, uh, the um, new for this year? So the Yes, um, we created a new um, email address. It's budget at hpcsd.org. So if anyone has any questions, they can email them there. I do receive them, but if I'm not available, they also get sent to the business office secretary and she could alert Greer or any other administrator that there's a question about the budget. Also new this year? I'm video? Oh, the video, yes. Oh. We have a video on our website of this presentation that was, um, yeah. The video features um, Mr. Heater, Dr. Rychek, and myself. It is this presentation. It's available on the website, but I could email it to anybody, right. too, if they would like We're it. We're all keeping our day jobs, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which you don't have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ooh, <that's> zing! <laughs> Dan! Uh, see? See? <laughs> Man, chalk one up for Dan on that one. I'm I'll let you mention it, yeah. <laughs> there are two retirees at this table. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Linda. Three. 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 Gary. Right, Gary. So are Gary. there any other questions? Are you retired? Yeah, but oh, that's a different table. Do you, <laughs> you're being... No, not Gary. I'm, Gary. Oh, I'm like, Gary. Oh, wow, I'm already retired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a new program. You have to retire first, and then when you get old, you work. <laughs> wow, that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the other do first is to become a grandparent before we become a parent. Enjoy the Whoa. kids, and then go back and figure out how you take care of them. <laughs> <laughs> the second half is a great... Great drill, drill. Okay. Uh, at this at this time, I think we should open public hearing. So I need a motion to open public hearing uh, for the public to comment on the budget. So moved. Second. Any comment on that? All in favor? Opposed? Now this is <laughs> Doug, this is an interactive. <coughs> as opposed to the normal right this uh, is a hearing yes yeah. this is a uh, it would be helpful if anybody has a question to come up to the mic and speak from there we have any takers on the budget want to ask anything uh, I think this is a function the fact that Linda did a really good job and it's easy to understand uh, so um, I'm not surprised that there are aren't any um, questions. For those people out there in the community that um, wish to see a line item budget for each line item, that is available on our website. That's new, also new for this year, I believe. Is that yeah, new for this year? We've had that document before, but it's more detailed it now. Yeah. Certainly more detailed. Yeah. I went through there it. There are right some now. copies here, too, in, oh, in the vestibule. There's a few hard copies. Okay. Um, I guess going once, going twice, any, uh, no questions? May I have a motion to close the public hearing then? So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to the regular agenda. Nice job, Linda. Thank you. Yeah, excellent. Uh, there are no modifications that I know of for the agenda. May I have a motion to adopt the agenda for tonight? So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? <coughs> All in favor? That brings us to pride. And Garrett, if you could uh, indulge me one more time. I know I cut you off. I have a special 
presentation I'd like to make. Well, not a problem. The, yeah. By all means, take your time. All right. This is a Oh. Boy, I haven't been on this side of the mic since uh, I used to get up and talk about <laughs> the budget uh, 14 years ago. Um, as you all probably know, uh, our superintendent received a, uh, an award recently and uh, unable to be at there at that time nor tonight, I have a certificate uh, from Senator Sue Serino in the 41st Senate District. This is a certificate of rec recognition, recognition, sorry, Educational Leadership Award Honoree Dr. Greer Reitrek in recognition of your service to the Hyde Park School District, sponsored by the Mid-Hudson School Study Council, sincerely Senator Sue Serino. So if you could come up and receive this. So, uh, on Friday uh, at FDR, we hosted our annual student talent show hosted by the student government organization. This year's winner was Hannah Bernier, who's also last year's winner, but I believe it was uh, rightfully earned. She really had quite a spectacular talent. She sang a song that she wrote herself, which was quite moving, and played piano while singing that song. And so to say the least, she was quite talented. Then, furthermore, uh, SGO also hosted um, our second annual AP review session. So prior to the uh, week of, of the AP tests, this, the student government brings a whole bunch of snacks and drinks into the library, and all the students who are in AP classes are welcome to come down and study for the afternoon in preparation. And also, last night, we yes, it was last night, we had the NHS induction ceremony where 53 new members joined our chapter of it, which is always nice to see growing. Um, we had the Relay for Life, which Dr. Rychek can certainly talk quite a bit about that, so I'll let her do that. Uh, the, also on that day was the District Art Fair, which you might also add more to, but I took a quick walk around, and we have quite a few talented artists inside of our district. I hope everyone or as many of you as possible, was able to go and see that. On the athletics end of things, we had our third annual race at the Oval Office. And this year is the first year we can claim the champions of our own race. Our boys varsity team won the Oval Office Invitational. And our girls freshman sophomore team also won their respective competition at the, at the uh, Oval Office Invitational. So that's exciting. Our boys and girls softball teams, as well as our lacrosse teams, are all excelling rightfully so. And their Mahal championships will be in the coming weeks. So hopefully, we, as many of us as possible, can go out there and support them. And I'd just like to th thank, on behalf of all the students, uh, Mrs. Steinberg and Mrs. Stemple, for coming into the economics classes today and explaining the budget just as I believe you just did for all of my peers. Who s it's not too easy to make a budget too exciting, especially to high schoolers, but I actually got quite a bit of positive feedback about it. So must have done something right. <laughs> Um, yeah, I went to the art show. I was very impressed by um, the quality of our art, and you could. I like that we put them all together. We can see from the elementary right on to the APs, and you just keep walking down. And I took part in the in the honor art honor society induction was there, but my wife was working at the concession stand at the Oval Office, and she had one of the officials come up to her and. 
He said, I just really want to praise this district. It was a well-run event, well-organized, and he really appreciated the district. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Um, so you did not mention Tiger Relays, Garrett. Oh, right, the, the Tiger Relays as well. Yeah, uh, the track team uh, cleaned up there, came back with a big trophy. Um, our crew team is doing really, right. you had a couple boats come in first place. Want to stay humble, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, athletics, and we just learned that the girls softball um, did won their won game. Won the game today against Marlboro. Uh, that may have clinched their position in the Mahals. The Mahals have been moved for softball and baseball to the 17th, which unfortunately conflicts with the uh, budget vote. But mm -hmm. uh, it's nice to have both teams represented in that uh, four-way four championship. It's divided into four divisions, and the four divisions play for the Mahal championship. To be fun. It's a nice lead-up to the uh, sectionals, which follow right after that. So those kids are going to be quite busy. Yeah. Um, the Haviland Middle School play was uh, last weekend. I didn't attend, but I've certainly heard by all accounts and Mr. Eric Shaw's here tonight that it was absolutely fantastic. Um, so congratulations to all those who participated and who helped. Um, it's also concert season, uh, so I know we've been to at least one right, concert the at the high school. high school. You've been to elementary concerts. In so in other words, uh, meet the instrument night. Mm -hmm. And then something new with music this year that I thought was really uh, nice, and I can pass these around to the board. Uh, the, the students that go to the Dutchess County Music Educator Awards Festival, DCMEA, um, uh, this year they had postcards ready um, for the parents to sign. Uh, that they went and that their students were part of it. And then on the back, they highlight whether it was elementary, all county, junior high, all county, or jazz festival. But what a, what a nice feedback loop to, to get a stack of cards in the mail um, that are signed to say, this is how many people attended. You know, we want to thank you for continuing to support the arts. Um, so that was definitely uh, new this year. Um, uh, Garrett mentioned the relay. We had to move inside because of the rain, um, yeah. but it, the girls, uh, the <coughs> Interact Club officers did an excellent job organizing it, and um, right now the total is 8400 that they earned in just from 1 o'clock in the afternoon till 5 o'clock in the evening, so $8,400. Um, they continue to collect money um, because there's a lot of residuals that come in and it takes people some time to get their donations. So if anything, it will go up from here. At a certain point, they call it a total. One of the nice things they do uh, with the Hyde Park relays is that Hyde Park has the relay that people call the Rhinebeck one, <laughs> but it's all Hyde Park people that organize that relay. It's a Hyde Park Relay for Life. It's the adult version, the 24-hour version. They do it in Rhinebeck. And when the high school club uh, decided to host the high school version, they're different. First difference is you don't camp out overnight with the high school students. But what they do is for the donation for the American Cancer Society, they take the high school relay and add it to the Rhinebeck relay so that the donation from the Hyde Park District as a whole is enormous. So, um, so in addition to the students that run the high school version, we still want to continue to support the adults that do the one in, at Rhinebeck. I think that's all I had on mm -hmm. that. Anybody, anybody else have anything? Okay, moving on, do we have anything for the superintendent's report? Yeah, a couple of things. Um, uh, as you know, these are not happy things, but the, um, there was a fire in our community uh, at the Arbors, and um, five, five of our families for students were affected, and one of our facilities um, staff members was directly 
a fact that, in fact, his unit was the right at the worst part of it. And um, he, him and his wife not only lost everything, but they lost pets as well. So we're happy that there was no damage to individuals, but there are certainly a number of people in our community who uh, are experiencing devastation and loss as a result of a fire. There are multiple collections um, going on in the district. Each building um, has a collection system um, right now through the nurses, through the PTA, and then certainly in other buildings at North Park, uh, there's a GoFundMe account for the staff member. Um, but every building is collecting, and certainly if people wanted to send donations to district office, what we will do is we will divide whatever donations we receive among the families. I know that Haviland Middle School is going to host a movie night fundraiser in early June, June 7th, 6th, 7th, don't quote us on this, June 9th, um, and that will be a fundraiser. So there's no shortage of, of venues for people to donate if they so choose, um, and what we do know is that for right now the families have a relocation place um, but certainly nothing replaces losing everything you own. Um, uh, we'd also like to express our condolences to Diane Riley's family. Uh, Diane Riley worked in the district for 28 years. Um, she retired a couple of years ago, um, and uh, uh, we did receive news that Diane passed away, so our, our, our Condolences to um, Diane's family. Hmm. So, um, just to report on a couple of other events, uh, um, Doug, Linda, and I were at one of Mrs. Mullen's other class, the third period class. We're going back Thursday for two more periods, and are you going back? Mm -hmm. So, all together, uh, we give five presentations to government, is it government and academics or just government? Well, currently, government. Ac currently economics. Economics, economics. okay. Yeah. So what's really, and we do this every year, it's just in, an, in, uh, in a very unique opportunity to speak to five classrooms of seniors about the school budget and also to have them um, have an opportunity to ask any questions. Mrs. Mullen does a, a tremendous job talking about uh, their ability to vote, the need for them to exercise the right to vote. Right. Um, <laughs> they get extra points if they get a picture of themselves, a selfie or whatever, if they go to uh, the voting site. But uh, it's a really good way for the adults in the district to mix with students on, on an important topic. So we enjoy it every year and we uh, divvy up the classes. Um, the district also held a community night on April 28th. This was widely publicized. This was an opportunity for the entire community to come to a presentation that involved facilities, budget, and some of our thoughts for how we're gonna organize ourselves strategically for moving forward um, with buildings and budgets and projects. And um, it's really interesting because, you know, I, I found, and I'll dig it out and send it to the board, I found a thing about old school, new school. And old school, school management was all about buses, books, budgets, and it was a whole list of B, wor B words. And now new school management is collaboration, community, creativity, um, just a whole list of, 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 of C words. So uh, I'll share that with you. It was just a kind of a neat way to, look at moving from B to C with uh, how we organize ourselves as a school. And certainly the word community is bigger than it ever has been in a, in a school setting. So the community night, uh, uh, we had, I'd say maybe seven community members that were not members of the board or staff members, mm -hmm. um, but well advertised mm -hmm. nonetheless. And I think that's it. Okay. So at this time, we uh, will have public participation. May I have a motion for public participation, please? So moved. Second. Second. 
Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. At this time, if anybody would like to address the board, if you could step up to the mic and uh, we'd be happy to hear you. Okay. Can't even count on Mr. Hughes. Jeez. <laughs> All right. All right. Then may I have a motion to close public participation, no, please? Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Oppose? Thank you. Do we have a uh, update from the uh, district leadership? The presentation will be at our next board meeting. Okay. Stay tuned. May I have a motion for 11.1, .1, the adoption of policy 5550R. That would be the regulation for student records uh, regulation. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that one? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Brings us to the consent agenda. May I have a, a motion for 12.1, the uh, consent agenda as listed in the agenda, please. So move. Second. Any discussion there? Just, yep. um, if I'm in the right place, under the personnel matters, mm -hmm. yes. I think there's some pretty significant retirements there that, um, if I there, can get to them, I'd. There are indeed. So, some I know, some I don't. Have experience with well, um, Kathy Baker for one I'm familiar with and you know done a great job for for many mm -hmm. years well, you got just the felt like it needed some, a little more attention than just a yep yep a pass I yeah. believe uh, Nancy Mozon is uh, also June on Bill. that and I know that because we agree once a year uh, <laughs> we agreed once a year for the last three years no, mm -hmm. other than that, <laughs> no comment. Right? I mean, um, <laughs> it it would be interesting to do the math to see actually how many years of service. Yeah. I mean, you know, looking at right. you know, starting in '95, '85, '94, '96. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's significant. Seventy-six. <coughs> yeah, I have family members that have had some of those on yeah. that list, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so. It is with sadness that we see some of our veteran teachers retire. Um, and also, uh, I just wanted to point out on the, uh, we, we expressed our consol condolences to Mr. Gavin's family at the last uh, board meeting. He was a uh, bus driver for 14 years, so, and he's on there because that's a legal thing you need to put on, but we did uh, express our condolences to his family at the last board meeting. The bus driver passed away. So, uh, maybe just to, since we've already mentioned one, why don't we go through the list? Kathy Baker was a first grade teacher at Alpar Smith. Ralph R. Smith, she's retiring. Pamela Bendick, sixth grade teacher at Haviland. Melanie Bonanzi, the library me media specialist at Haviland. Linda DeRosa, reading teacher at Violet Avenue. Uh, Carol Jean Ferretti, special education teacher at Haviland. Nancy Molzone, speech teacher at Netherwood. Kelly Turner Dreyer, physical education teacher at the high school, and June Vale, the reading teacher at Netherwood. Yeah, uh, Dan, you might want to add uh, Jane, uh, Jane Johnson Cook at Havel Middle School. Oh, it's in the later. Also, on, yeah. yeah, it's later on. In. All right. Any other comments? Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, that brings us down. I have a motion for 13.1, special education placements. I'll move. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, I've reviewed the packet and recommend its adoption as presented. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. That brings us down D to the next one. 
May I have a motion for 13.2, uh, nominating a trustee for DHIC, that's our health insurance uh, group. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? As you all know, Linda will be that designate. Keep them in line. Yeah. <laughs> all in favor? And opposed? Thank you. May I have a motion for 13.3? Uh, Separation agreement and general release. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that one? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. We have a motion for 13.4 contract for interpreting services. So moved. That would be sign language interpreting, that time it interpreting. Second. And we got a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, can I have a motion for the decision on student suspension? Um, in this case, let me just get over there. I'll take motion A. So I'll, yeah, to I'll move that uh, we're going to adopt. Uh, the be resolved that the Board of Education, the Hyde Park Central School District, that upon review of the record from the superintendent's hearing involving student number 5, 10, 16, was identified to the board in executive session. The board hereby sustains the decision of the superintendent. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Well, we'll give another shot. May I may have a motion <laughs> for public participation. No move. Come on, Mike, you can get up there. Second. Any discussion there? All in favor? Opposed? We are now in public participation. Ah, all right. I knew we could count on somebody. Somebody. <laughs> well, I didn't want to single you out. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hi, my name is Bobby Goodman from Hyde Park. Um, I hi, just Bobby. want to. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank those teachers that you listed off as retiring because many of my children have had them and they're great and I'm going to really miss them. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll tell you. Just you know, you know, keep fishing long enough, you get the heavyweights come out. Steve Hughes, uh, I don't Steve. know about heavyweight, yeah. district yeah. resident. I just had a question about the yellow blinking lights at Violet Avenue. What controls them? Because I've driven past oh. Violet Avenue when school is not in session and they're blinking. Yeah. And I've driven past when school is in session and they're not blinking. So I was just wondering what controls whether they're on or not. Uh, I, I, uh, we may well, have. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll wait till we yeah. close. Yeah. Any, <laughs> anybody else want to uh, want to answer or no? Address the board. I have a motion to close public participation, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. We're now in. Uh, it's. Uh, I was told there's a one person that is able to unlock that box and change those. Thing. And if he doesn't show up, it doesn't happen. Sometimes one gets done and the other one doesn't. I know, it's fr I go by there every morning. Um, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know the gentleman's name. I would, it, this is locker room gossip, somebody that uh, also uh, goes to the gym the same time I do, uh, who is a Hyde Park resident, told me that there is a, a single person of contact, one person. And the only person that can change that. Can yeah, sure. Is it a district no, 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 it's no, a state no. DOT probably. Yes, yeah. it is. It's yeah. state. Is he available when mistakes are made to appear at traffic court? <laughs> <laughs> um, well. You know, if it's if it's a concern, uh, we can certainly write a letter on behalf of the district to express that we're concerned that the lights appear to be on when we need them, and then not on. It, it's quite you, often. You know what I mean. It, it is quite often. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so if if it if we would like to send a letter to DOT, we could certainly do that. I think we should. Yeah, I mean, I think we should. Yeah. they're there for a purpose. And yeah. 
Yeah, that, that, they're there because that particular building has a lot of a walking population mm -hmm. right. crossing Violet Avenue right. to go to Bradley. And Village, right across so. the street. Right. right. And right. We, we know the default assumption is that the district is responsible. Right. Okay. okay. Well, Any other comments? Do that and share a copy with the board. I'm sure we all echo Bobby's uh, comments that uh, people, and I actually have having second thoughts of thinking about it. I didn't mean to make fun of Nancy, but uh, we just have a, we have a relationship. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, uh, but she served many years and was helpful to my son, actually, uh, when he was in, in Netherwood. So um, I want to make sure, I meant no disrespect at all, but we, we just happen to have this joke that we, re we agree once a year on things. Just so. that he's got a relationship with Nancy. Any, any other comments? Yeah, I was going to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's. All right. I don't know of any other matters that are deemed necessary by the board. Uh, any subcommittee reports? Um, the health committee met last week, and we're going to be doing something a little bit different next year. We're actually calling it the road show. That the health committees will then be meeting at 4:15 at a various locations once we determine it at other school buildings in an attempt to get more parent involvement into the health committee. Cool. Cool. Kevin, you want to do the audit? Yep. Audit committee met uh, yesterday. We uh, got the corrective action plan for our internal audit, uh, which we'll be presenting to the board at the next meeting. Um, and uh, the topic uh, of that uh, audit was to focus on the student uh, student grading system or information system. So we actually learned quite a few things and uh, have a good directive action plan in place. So um, is that audit? I can't remember. Was the audit presented to the entire board? I mean, I see it, so I just can't remember. I mean, so I think if, if it wasn't, um, it will be, um, yeah, it must have been, right? Because yeah, we had to accept right. it. Right. Okay. So you'll see now the corrective on, action plan that was developed by Cora and Lynn. Right. For approval. Yeah. For approval. The next yeah, board meeting. The next board meeting. Correct. Um, we also had a personnel subcommittee meeting. I think I'll leave the results of that for the next board meeting for whatever an announcement the dis district wants to make. But we did meet and we did interview some candidate candidates for the uh, director of fine arts and music. And there was other? a meeting last week of the Dutchess County School Board Association. Mm -hmm. um, went over, actually everybody spoke uh, about their budgets and I would say everyone's kind of in the same place as we are and there's some some districts actually are holding with, with no increase at all. They've been able to, to do that. Um, uh, but I would say, and I don't know that anyone is trying to, looking for a super majority. I think everybody is staying you know, within the cap. Uh, also had a little recap or a discussion about the meeting with the regent, Judith Johnson. Um, and feedback is relatively positive, and right, it was she, very positive. Yeah. And um, she's expressed an interest uh, in perhaps coming back next year. So perhaps we'll need right. a, a larger venue for it. Um, yeah. And coming up next month will be the annual dinner for the our annual meeting, of which we uh, mm -hmm. typically have a dinner as well. Location not yet. Uh, determined and program not yet determined, although they're talking about perhaps having someone come in and speak about uh, school safety, particularly SRO programs. So Great. Any other? I think that's about it. That brings us to upcoming meetings. We have a, uh, a meeting Thursday, May 12th, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. That, uh, well, it's not a meeting. That's when the voter registration, last day to register to vote, that would be here at the district office. Uh, we do have a meeting on the 12th. 7 p.m., meet the candidates right here in this room, here in the district office. I will not be here. I will be at, at my daughter's graduation, so I think... Sorry, Mike, but that comes first. Uh, so that's, that's to meet the candidates, not the Board of Ed meeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah <no. laughs> because the sign up at the high school. At the high school is wrong. Is, is yeah. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that this morning, actually. Doug, do we know how to or how questions will be submitted to the candidates? I was told that they would be uh, uh, questions submitted in advance. I don't know, Mike, maybe you, can, you haven't gotten it yet. 
Uh, the message, the letter we got from the uh, okay. So that's Rome. under under uh, 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 the process isn't quite complete yet as to what. Well, I, d we I originally did, I, I was told that that's what would happen. There no. would be written com questions and that uh, they would <coughs> oh, fooey, they would be able to uh, look at them and then there may be or there would be questions in the uh, uh, from the audience. Well, we got we did this, the four candidates did get a uh, um, email from the voter the group that's uh, oh, okay. running it, and what it indicated was that the people attending would be given cards to submit questions. Okay. And those cards would be viewed <coughs> and uh, checked for duplicates and stuff like that, and sorted by the moderator. Uh, and prior to the start, uh, there'd be a few uh, administrative things like who's going to speak first, who's going to speak second. Okay. And uh, the opening and closing statements. Okay, so that's one. And it looks like it's time to last about an hour. They indicated that they would uh, be stopping at 8:05. Okay. You got any other questions? Uh? Did Debbie have? Did you want to add anything? Or? Well, I received questions today, but I'm not sure if I'm supposed to share them yet. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Stay tuned. And who's the lead agency on that? You know, on Meet the Candidates Night, it, uh, the superintendent and, you know, this is uh, somebody else. The district clerk runs this. Who's the lead um, person on this? Well, I work with the PTA, and they, they're they bringing in the Women League of Voters okay. to moderate. So the PTA is bringing in the league. Okay. Okay, and then the big one, Tuesday, May 17th, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the district vote on the budget and board members election. That would be at Haviland Middle School in the gymnasium. And I don't, I don't know if this will be on viewing time yet, but on Thursday, as we do each year, <laughs> um, we host the annual Chamber of Commerce breakfast. There's a sponsor, the district doesn't pay for the breakfast. So each year we host the Chamber of Commerce breakfast in May um, for their monthly breakfast meeting and we host it here and I give a budget presentation um, and that's this Thursday, but it is a Chamber of Commerce event. But um, right, I think there's still time to sign up for chamber members. 7.30 at Hyde Park, Park Elementary. Elementary. That, that's AM, 7.30 AM. <laughs> Okay. Uh, just one thing, Doug, before yep. we, uh, the, when we went through the uh, the consent agenda, I forgot, I meant to mention it, but I missed it. it approved in that list of the things on the uh, agenda was the uh, painting of the school gym, uh, the high school gym, and the adding of the Dwayne Davis uh, memorialization to the uh, uh, gym floor. That will be right. done and completed, I believe, somewhere by mid June. Which you know is is a wonderful thing. I, I my kids all played for Dwayne. Several of them, most of them played. Well, the girls opening. didn't play for Dwayne, but they were coached by Dwayne and Dwayne's son. So, mm -hmm. it had a, a link to all of them. But uh, it, it's a it's a, a wonderful dedication, a wonderful thing that we're doing for him. And uh, people keep the the in, informal mayor of uh, Hyde Park, uh, John Cleaker, asked me every week when when's it going to be done. So I can now announce officially, John. It's going to be done in the next six weeks. Okay. Good. And um, I think it's appropriate we have a some kind of an official opening. Perhaps. I'm not sure when they're going to recognize yeah. it. Maybe the first game of the year. Okay. Well, at some point it should be. Yes. Okay. There's no need for an executive session. Uh, additional. I'm going to have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you, gentlemen and ladies.